Well. I have no questions or topics for you. We're starting this with nothing. Well, you have questions and topics for me, right? Or just questions? I have questions, and they're very bait-focused. Wow. So, get ready. First up, why start with white when airbrushing? And if you couldn't start with white, what color would you choose? Is that a viewer question? Yeah, and you're something. Oh, all my stuff's on. (laughs) Yeah, I felt like I had to yell. I still hear something. It's a fish tank. Or chip farting. Oh, I should turn my big heater off. (laughs) You are not prepared today. Why start with white? Yes, and... If you couldn't start with white, what color would you choose? Well, you start with white because it puts the brightest bait coat. Bait coat. Sorry. Let me let me restart. I haven't had very much coffee today. I'm cutting back. Slightly withdrawing right now. There's a headache. Really? Yeah. Is there? Honey. I'm not kidding. You start with white because it's the brightest bait base coat possible. It's so that all the colors that you put on the bait after that are as bright as they can be. That's it. Hmm. Interesting. Is it? Yeah, that is. Really? Yeah. Okay, if you couldn't start with white, what color would you choose? Well, like you can start dark and have different effects go onto the bait. You if you start with black, you can uh, do pearls, and I've done that before. Hmm. You know, Bob Ross, he has the gesso black painting mm-hmm. sometimes, and then he paints over that with different colors. It's just a different effect. It's just a different starting point. You should start as a challenge, start with something crazy. It's like fluorescent pink. Yeah. It's not that hard. Or blue or just any other color. Just throw them off, you know? I've started with like tan and natural stuff. When you when you want to paint a natural thing, you'll start with something sometimes like a tan or a green muted pink. Yeah. You know? Yeah, you should try something crazy. Like bright blue or something. It shouldn't be a big deal. I, it I is. could I could uh just paint the other colors off after that and it'd look fine you don't need to start with white Mm. i always just start with white because it's the brightest it seems like it's a need like because you always do it really yeah it really does well i don't care what it seems like you know i know but you should just change it up for like to throw them off is what i'm saying like they think you're gonna start with white and you just throw something else on there and don't say anything that'd be really funny yeah what if i started with clear then it'll just be wood. Boom. That's about as throwing you off as no. possible. Look at your face. You're all questioning uh, it. No. And... <laughs> no. Okay. No, because you've done wood before. You've just left it wood and yeah. then just painted like... No, I just start with clear and then move on. Okay, now white over Dude, the whole thing. Really? What if I did that? That would just be trolling. Right. That's pretty <laughs> much starting with white this whole time has been is just trolling. It can be anything. Good to know. You're welcome. So if you couldn't start with white, what color would you choose? Did you already say that? Probably just the grooviest color shift possible. So it's (laughs) as many hyper shift colors as you can get. Just put them all down and then start from there. You're feisty today. I well, (laughs) I already gave you my excuse. (laughs) Oh man. Okay. What kind of paints are the best for airbrushing lures? Createx isn't. It's the type of paint I have the most of, but I'm certain that that is not the best choice. Um, one sec. This US art supply, I have enjoyed shooting these out of my airbrush and I got a Iwata Micron custom airbrush. It's good as you can get, probably not, but it's really good. And it does a way better job shooting this stuff than literally anything Createx makes. Createx was just the first giant lot of airbrush paint that I bought. Yeah. And then I got their Wicked stuff. It's a little better than the original stuff. Badger makes paints. Uh, There's like Spectra paints. Mm -hmm. I've shot those. Those are better. Everything I've used other than Createx is better. Really? I am feisty tonight. You are. Watch out, everyone, (laughs) because man alive. (laughs) I don't need your sponsorship, Createx. Okay. Uh, (laughs) Didn't you get all those Createx? Is it Createx? Createx. Createx. Stupid name, too. Yeah, I can't even say it. Createx. Honey, <laughs> tone it down. <laughs> oh my gosh. I am quitting coffee. And I just kind of started today. I had like one cup this morning. Yeah. And I'm probably not going to drink any tomorrow. 
I have a, a bit of a surgery to go through and I can't drink caffeine afterwards. So I'm, I'm withdrawing now instead of then. Yep. You were up to what? Three rounds a day? Two. Sometimes And three. then I'd have some tea at night. Yeah. Black. The highest caffeine content tea you can drink. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's what's happening. <laughs> that's why I'm this way right now. It's okay. Um, no, I was going to say, didn't you get the creatine? Createx, oh no, I can't say it. <laughs> Createx paints as a gift. My mom bought me. Yeah. A, a lot. I like, think I'm she started sure. you out. With yeah. And it was just the standard. Was that like a birthday present or something? I'm not sure. I don't remember. It was just all of the colors in the standard Createx paint. And it just, that stuff gave me more trouble than necessary. Mm. Really. But I think that's why you like started out with it is because it was an, an initial like gift when you were first starting making baits. Right. And I thought it was like the stuff. Mm -hmm. I thought it was the best brand. It's what everybody was recommending. Mm. Wow. Marketing's a powerful thing. Mm -hmm. It's the only reason I told her to get me that. Yeah. Thanks, mom. <laughs> that's so awkward when people do that. Say thanks, mom. Yeah. Thanks, mom. I'm cringing. Cheers. Drinking coconut water tonight. No coffee. We're healthy. I just got straight up water. Right on. What would happen if you rotate the V joint 90 degrees on a swim bait? Would the tail go up and down? I think both sides would catch water pretty evenly and kind of just immobilize the tail. So hmm. sorry to crush all of your creative thoughts around that process, but. Have you ever tried it? Yeah. And that's kind of, you know, I, I've only tried it once, so I. It's anecdotal, kind of, but I'm pretty sure that's what went on. It didn't have much of an action. You need something coming down and catching water or up and like being center line with the bait and catching water that way. That's, down or that's what up. a lip is. Like a lip coming down and catching water or something coming up and catching water. Right. So couldn't you just have a lip on it then with the joint turned? You don't need the joint turned. Want to see what I'm making? No, it <laughs> I don't know if this will work, but you guys have seen what I'm making, I guess. Is that a lip on the second? Yeah, it's a uh, anal fin lip. Oh my, genius once again. No, I'm just kidding. That's pretty cool though. You obviously don't watch my videos, the bait, cranking out the baits, you know? Yeah, I tried to watch your video twice now. Oh, the kids? Yes. Got you. Yeah, that's pretty cool. We'll see what that does. People tell me bait ideas like that in person all the time. Like, oh, I had this good idea. You do this, that, and the other thing. What do you think? And I'm just like, yeah. Like, that's my reaction to all of them. Just like, I got, yeah, I understand. But you don't know what they're talking about? Well, it's just, then I have to start, a com like I'm working on a video already right now. And I probably have my ideas like ready for a few videos ahead. And it's like, okay, I'll get around to that maybe in like a month. Maybe, probably not, you know, that's what's going on in my head. Yeah. Maybe you just have too much going on in your head already. And so adding to it with other people. Yeah. Um, maybe I should tell them the truth and just be like, I might get around to that months from now. Or just like, I got a lot going on up in here. So like, you're just adding to my craziness right now. I don't want to communicate that i don't appreciate what they're saying because yeah, i do yeah at all so yeah i just end up awkwardly oh. saying yeah to them just say i'll write that down great idea and then write it down and then you'll have like a list but i think they're like ne next video oh really it better be i better be seeing that next video that's kind of I what i feel like but i don't think I'm they, they're so excited about it that's kind of what they're communicating like yeah. my excitement right now trumps yours i want to see this and you make it and they probably do want to see it. That's why they're excited. But I don't think they're like next video or else. That's a little intense. Yeah, I'm, I might be projecting a little. Yeah. Fair enough. Ready for the next one? I'm ready. What are your favorite and least favorite things about bait making? I think when you really like doing something, you don't question why, you know. I've not thought about that. I wonder if they want a process of like a step in bait making that you do. What's your favorite part? I think it could be anything that's your favorite part. Maybe it's the fishing. Maybe it's the... I like the uh, process I've gone through and gotten good at it. That's probably my favorite thing about it all at this point. And mm -hmm. I'm proud that I've gotten this far with it all. Pride's a sin, though, you know? 
Well, what's your like actual favorite part about making them? Like physically making them? Well, that's a tough one. Because if I say carving, then I think about painting. And I think about <laughs> paintings better than carving. But then if I say painting, I think about carving. And Aww. You like it all. No. There's one. I need to think. <laughs> Probably putting the split rings on the bait. Just kidding. <laughs> that's like the worst. That would be pathetic. <laughs> like... <laughs> Just wrangling those bastards on the... Oh. I'm sorry. I wonder if that is like a, th a word that YouTube would... Let's you know, not test it out. Put my video in the rankings a little less for, you know. We don't need any of that. <laughs> they went through a whole new policy this year. Can't swear within the first 15 seconds and stuff. Mm -hmm. I never do. I'm so clean. I'm a good boy. You should, when you're editing, you should put my beep over okay. what you said. That'd be funny. Yeah. Okay. My favorite part is detail carving. Except scales. Like, there's a caveat to everything, but yeah. overall, I think my favorite part is detail carvings. And then the, the close second, and it's like not even considered a step down, pretty much close second, is painting. Mm. I so like, they're the same? Yeah, pretty much the same, but if I had to pick one, it's detail carving, except scales. And then the worst thing is, yeah, putting hooks on a bait, because mm. you stab yourself a lot of the time. And if you use good split rings, they're extremely difficult to get on. Mm -hmm. And that's subjective too, because like, if you use quote unquote good split rings that I'm thinking it's a super stiff, hard, like small size, but extremely heavy weight load split ring. But then there's other people that like the thinner wire that give, and mm -hmm. you could like literally pop a hook off if you get a snag out mm. and, you, and you don't lose your bait. And some people consider those good split rings. So That's true. But yeah, hardware and assembly of the bait, really, is my least favorite part. Hmm. Except it's kind of fun still, because the whole bait's coming together. Mm -hmm. And you see the whole finished product immediately after that, so. Wow. There's not a lot to hate. That's good. Yeah. Getting poked sucks while you're putting hooks on, though. Because mm -hmm. you put a lot of pressure behind that stuff. And it, yeah. It's worse than at the doctor's office when they prick you, mm -hmm. for sure. Maybe prick's a bad word. I don't know. think they're... It's fine. Okay. What is the strangest smell you've ever smelt? Probably when you burn a cup of Plastisol, making soft plastic lures, and you get a cupcake going, like a black mushroom cupcake, and it's whew, stinky. Mm. Very, very strong smell. And it's not just strong. That It is strange, too. Okay. It's definitely strange. It's like nothing I've ever smelled before. Okay. It could probably kill small animals if they breathed in too much of it, I'm thinking. Yeah. It's so potent. Yeah, I thought this would be interesting because you smell everything. So I feel like you've smelled a lot of smells. Yeah. And that's one thing I will not voluntarily smell. Hmm. I, like, I know what that is and no. But it's it lingers. Like, when I made baits a lot with Nick in his garage and we made a cupcake mm -hmm. Whew. it's like four days later you can still smell it it's pretty bad Nasty. it stays in there this thing moves more air than a fume hood so i should be pretty safe all right that was two minutes and we have some perfectly ready to use clear plastisol right there let's go for another minute There it goes. That's a cupcake. It's growing. It's gonna be nasty. I'm gonna run outside with this one sec. So that is an unbelievably indescribable smell. I mean, it's very plasticky, but it's not like any plastic you you smell normally that burns, it's bad. Most of the time they mushroom up really high if you way overcook them. You could see that there's a little bit of plastisol on the bottom that's not cooked like that, but whew. That's why I call them a cupcake, because they cup, like, they rise out of the jar, usually. Freaking disgusting, man. That's all I got, honey. That was fast. Have you seen anything interesting? 
on the YouTube or I don't know. <laughs> I'm just getting comfy. <laughs> I was thinking of stories. We got plenty, you know. Why don't I have any stories? You seem to not remember your past. <laughs> just straight up. Yeah. You seem to have something going on that disables you from remembering your past. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> 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 Honey. What did we eat? We? I'm not part Oh, the burritos. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> That was fake. Okay. A better way to make a fart noise than is with just your lips and use your vocal cords. You know? I'm not even. I, I was going to try. I'm not going to. Okay. I learned that from my brother. I know. Ryan. I remember you guys doing that. He learned that from a friend and really? he taught me that. Yeah. <laughs> that is a better way to make a fart noise. Interesting. <laughs> All right, we can go from there. What else should we talk about? <laughs> what's I've... the most... Okay. I have a good question for you. When we were dating, what's the most impressive thing you ever witnessed me do? Like when we were just like kids dating and I, you, you, like you still had a chance to not marry me, you know, so it counted <laughs> as I impressed you. What was the most impressive thing? We were 16 when we started dating, right. by the way. Um, let me think. So. Most impressive. <laughs> yeah. No. This is interesting stuff, you know, because you're my wife now. Yeah. Hmm. I just remember a lot of making out. Like. <laughs> <laughs> what about like fishing wise? Maybe we can refine it to that. We went out fishing so much. You know, did I ever impress you fishing with my fishing skills? I mean, I didn't know how to fish. You taught me how mm -hmm. and like introduced me to everything. I thought it was pretty cool. Um, I think we did it too much. Yeah, we did that all the time. There was many, many, like, didn't catch any fish days. Yeah, it was just kind of fun. Yeah. I wasn't, like, impressed, I wouldn't say. Right. Maybe I shouldn't have questions for you about that. No, I, I can just let me think. Sorry. Like, you <laughs> need time, so do I. Um, I, <laughs> I mean, I was impressed with how soft your lips are. Oh my goodness. <laughs> wow. <laughs> really? I remember that distinctly. That's it? <laughs> you have very soft lips. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I remember being impressed with when we were in chemistry, how, because we were chemistry partners, and I would just copy off of all your work because I had no idea what was going on. And I was impressed by, like, how you actually understood stuff. I knew what was going on. Yeah, and you knew you were really good at math. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I liked chemistry, too. Yeah. And physics. Yeah, I was, like, a STEM student, and then nothing else. Yeah. Like, all that foreign language, and I was pretty good at uh, writing, though, too. Mm -hmm. I was a really yeah. good writer. Still oh, am. yeah. I, didn't you write like a story? Or no, I think I read one of your essays or something. Yeah. And it was really good. In college. Yeah. Like the, she wanted to take it and submit it somewhere and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I just like, I was like, no, that's okay. <laughs> 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 I didn't care. Yeah. So you were uh, impressed by my specific academic abilities? Yeah. Wow. I guess I wasn't, uh, I never excelled at any sports really. I did a lot. But I never excelled at any, so. Oh, so what were you most impressed by me at that time? Probably your willingness to, like, just stick it out with me, you know? Because we were just kids. We weren't, like, mm -hmm. adults and could do whatever. You know, you're pretty restricted at that age. What am I saying? I was a loyal. Like, we were so bored all the time. Mm -hmm. There's nothing to do. And you just stuck with me. Yeah, super loyal. That's what I'm impressed about. <laughs> <laughs> this is why we need topics this is a good one what is bait making still a hobby to you can a hobby goes work 
quotes, stay enjoyable as before, or does it need a different approach and mindset? A hobby goes work. No, it's work. Yeah, I don't think it was ever a hobby. Ever. Like, you started as you wanted to make money from it. Yeah. I think I've always taken it, like, the same level of seriousness. Mm -hmm. And it was, like, taken seriously because I always eventually wanted to make money doing it. Yeah, you were never just making lures for fun, just to, like, fish with for yourself. I've probably only done that, like, a dozen times out of the past, I don't know, like, ten years. Yeah, so that, yeah, yeah, it was never a hobby. (laughs) It's always just been serious business, the bait making. Yep. Wow. It is fun when you do just make one for yourself, but then I always think, dang, I could sell this. Yeah, don't look at money like it's a thing that stops creativity or something, like it it adds energy to creativity for sure. Mm-hmm. The potential to earn resources to making your art for yeah. sure. It adds creativity to it. When you first started, you weren't as good as you are now. And no one was really buying them. Yeah. And then, you know, you wanted to get better and better so that you are really good. And people want to buy them. And it's, yeah. Totally. It, it makes you do better. Yeah, it's the motivation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, why do... There's tons of people who have issues with, like, the money-making aspect of their art. Like, some people have issues just selling anything. I think it's in me a little bit. Like, I would rather give something away than sell it deep down. Mm. Yeah. I have a bit of a resistance to selling. I don't know exactly where that comes from. Of why you just want to give it away? Yeah, why would I, why I would just prefer to give something away than sell it. I don't want to write it off as like, oh, I'm just a generous guy. No, I think it's like, maybe it's easier just to give it away instead of ask money for something like it just feels better. Uh, pleasing somebody feels better than, to me than to gain something myself. Mm-hmm. Got to fight that off. <laughs> so if they have a, if someone has a hobby... And wants to turn it into work. Like say they've just been making baits or whatever for like anything for just for fun. Mm -hmm. And then they want to start selling it. Do you think they need to like change their mindset or I don't know because you didn't do that. So I don't know if you can give advice on that. Well, what I'm doing is just like playing the game. Like I'm accepting that the money is going to motivate me, you know, Mm -hmm. because what they're doing, I would guess is like trying to resist that the money's motivating. So you just like accept that you play the game. I I make the thing for the money. Mm-hmm. It doesn't take away from you having made the crazy cool thing. And you can post pictures of it on Instagram and everybody can applaud it. And it's like, yeah, it's awesome. You know, mm-hmm. it's, but. We're like how enjoyable it is because you really enjoy making lures. Oh yeah. Don't let a disdain for money, which a lot of people have, uh, keep you from earning resources from what you make mm-hmm. for sure. This is very, like, fishing and bait-related podcast. It's probably good. Yeah. should probably have one of those once in a while. If you could go fishing with any fishing YouTuber, who would it be and why? I'd go fishing with Spencer again. River certified? I guess I already have, so let me think. Like, any? Any. I don't think anyone's ever gone fishing on video with 618. He's always just done his own thing. Hmm. So I'd probably feel, like, pretty special to go fishing with 618 yeah probably 618 who else fishing youtubers i don't follow a ton of fishing youtubers really do you want to say your surgery you're getting didn't you just say you're getting a surgery oh yeah going to the oral surgeon i've said that on video already oh you have yeah i've said that in a video okay but i haven't said what's going on i'm just a genetic abomination in my mouth i'm missing eight at least teeth is that what they say? I honestly don't remember with all I think all it's this. like eight or more teeth. I just didn't develop. I don't have. And I have five retained baby teeth that need to go. And I have two wisdom teeth that need to go on this side. Mm-hmm. So you're getting all, you're getting like seven teeth removed? Yeah. Pretty soon here? Pretty soon here. I'm going to get seven teeth pulled at once, mm-hmm. including two wisdom teeth. And then six months after that, while I have Invisalign to straighten stuff out, they're going to put a bone graft up right here. 
two of them yeah right there and apparently that hurts real bad when you do a bone graft it, it hurts real bad i had one and it was i thought it was infected i kept calling them and i'm like this thing is infected i need to get into the doctor because it hurts so bad yeah and they're like it's only been two days it's not long enough to be infected i'm like no this it hurt yeah so and i'm gonna have invisalign while that's happening so yeah i'm gonna like push it when it comes to it hurting and getting the invisalign back on after it heals and stuff and oh man it's gonna be brutal and then once that takes and my invisalign's done then i have to get six metal spikes shot into my jaw bones drilled and then set in there implants implants poor fella is that it yeah after those six implants go in this is so expensive too and they do the implants they shoot the metal things in there and then you're not done with the money because you got to get the crowns or the teeth put on the metal things and it's a whole nother bill yeah for the for the teeth themselves six of them yeah it's pretty they're, rough they're like a couple thousand each or something and dental insurance is garbage doesn't pay for nothing i'm feisty tonight some honey. people have it it's just not <laughs> all right but yeah moving on what is your workout routine give us an example day you know like squat 400 pounds 10 times like 10 sets of 400 pounds 10 10 reps you know every day that's a warm-up and move up to 600 i'm just kidding <laughs> i just i squat every day usually other leg stuff on top of that and then some like pull-ups and you don't like saying uh, do you no i don't i feel so <laughs> dorky when i go over <laughs> my workout stuff yeah but you have been squatting every day for over a year yeah and not super heavy i just i just squat every day mm -hmm. four sets of 10 with the weights that i do so like which is a personal 225 at the most personal info right i mean it's pretty good <laughs> I'm, I, I'm not weak you know yeah but yeah you since you're getting this oral surgery here, it's going to ruin your, your streak. Yeah, it's going to put a damper on that. I'm still going to try to get out here and squat the bar once if I can, because I don't want to ruin my streak of squatting every single day. Yeah. Some people would say that that's not squatting, just getting out here and squatting the bar once. But I don't want to get dry clots and what's it, dry, dry sockets. Socket. I don't want to get, get dislodge my clots and get dry socket. Yeah. You should probably just stay in the house and not come out here and squat. It's so depressing, though, if that's what Aww. ruins the streak, you know? An obligated, I had no choice, I got to get this done, surgery. You don't want to pop a clot while you squat. Maybe it's worth it. So I can say, I squatted every day still, and I can go on multiple years. Yeah, you got to start over the years. I know. Wow. That's why it might, it might be worth it to pop a clot. <laughs> if i squat the bar once it's like bending over and picking something up it's like that's not gonna pop a clot <laughs> you know i'll be fine okay just don't hurt yourself and I might don't squat pop the bar a, 10 times just don't pop a clot i'll try whatever not to. you do <laughs> if i do i do no that's a severe severe pain yeah i know like it's exposed nerve and bone and stuff yeah i've never popped it, or what is it popped a clot <laughs> i've never popped a clot but i here it's really painful. Yeah. Why are you so scared of making fart sounds? I don't know why anybody would have the impression that I'm scared of that. I'm just stating facts when I say it was the chair and I didn't fart, you know? Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Do you have any scary stories? I don't. All the times that I was ever super scared as a kid was just like after watching a scary movie. Mm hmm And then just like every tiny creek in the house scared me. I'd be like, want to run to my bedroom. Scary stories. They probably want paranor paranormal stuff, you know? I don't have any of that. Yeah. I've never had any things that happened to me that I can't explain. Thank goodness. that. I wouldn't, well, sometimes in fishing at Palisades, I just get freaked out alone snagging. Really? Like I hear stuff up on the on the bluff, but it's probably animals, you know? Yeah. But that place just creeps me out a little bit because so many people have died there. Yeah, and especially there's, like, this walking trail with really large cliffs. Yeah. And people have fallen off. Yeah. And even, like, rock climbing, people... Yeah, that's where we were at when that guy I tried to save died mm -hmm. with the kid. 
Yeah, people have passed away there many different ways. Yeah. So it's probably haunted. Well, I, th- I think that's just in your brain. So when you hear a squirrel rustle by, you're like, oh, was that a yeah. was that a ghost of an Indian, you know? Yeah, we don't really get... <laughs> or Native American, sorry. We don't really get um, weird vibes like that. I think Chips lived with us too long. He he knows what's up. Those ears are like antennae for mm-hmm. anything approaching. And he will make noises if anything's approaching. So yeah. We don't really get scared. I mean, I do. But I don't have any like scary stories. Not even from a kid, though. No. When you're a kid. I have scary, freaky dreams. But I think everyone does to some yeah. degree. If you had to give up all your tools except one to build baits with, what would you keep and why probably the delphino three hmm. just a utility knife why is that because you can get the most done with it i mean you're still kind of out of luck with some things like uh like painting like how you're going to secure the lead to the bait and painting i get like you can have a wooden bodied bait mm-hmm. and just dip it in a cup of sealer and it's, i guess dip it in paint roll it around in some paint yeah but that knife will cut out Like you can bend the wire with your fingers and that knife can cut a channel still and you can put it in. But you need like glue and epoxy or super glue and baking soda. They just said tool. Right. So you can use all that. Delphino 3. And I wouldn't choose some fancy carving knife either. Get yourself a box cutter. That's what's going to, like you want, you want those blades really. Don't try to be fancy. It's not going to help. A little bit of feist there. I'm pretty loyal to my Delphino 3. I'm kind of liking the feist. Oh, good. I got more. I'm holding it back. Yeah, I think you should, but... I think the best blades for the Delphino 3, by the way, are the Irwin brand blades. They just, they go through Tupelo wood so well. Better than all the others I've ever tried. For carving details, small. I don't know, they have a better tip. It's angled just right. It's beveled just right. Irwin brand. You remember that time we went on a walk on the bike trail? This was real early when we were dating. And we were just walking and it was a normal day and there was a dog far down on the trail. And it it was walking up to us like it's a friendly, normal dog. No, it was it was. But as feral. soon as it got to us, it like... And its fur went up and stuff and it's like... Having, now having Chip for as long as we've had, and like I know what the way dogs can be, mm-hmm. we were in danger. Yeah, for sure. But somehow we managed to just go around and it went around. Yeah, it literally and hunkered down like it was going to attack. And, we just and kept it walking. poofed up and was growling and showing its teeth like going to lunge at yeah, us. Yeah, full mouthful of teeth it was showing. Yeah, and we were literally just walking. Yeah. And I, th- I remember I like hid behind you. I like ran and hid behind you because I was like, thought it was going to attack us. Yeah. Marling Bates might not have been a thing if that dog decided to because it's pretty big. Yeah. That was like a straight up wolf dog. Yeah. Something. And then, yeah, Had we like, in it. I think it knew we were scared and then it like just went around and backed away and left. Yeah. Anyway. It's intense. I'm just, I'm thinking back to our past. Mm-hmm. That story popped in my mind. There's one time with one of my old girlfriends. No, stop. This, stop. this is a funny story. No, stop. Cut, cut, <laughs> cut. I will not listen to this. <laughs> she, <laughs> Honey! She, I couldn't drive at the time. Only she could. And uh, she lived on a gravel road in a farmhouse out in the boonies. And uh, she was driving me back home from her place. And she was like, watch this. And oh, she, like you did to me? But this was dumber. Well, no, I shouldn't say that. This is pretty equivalent. But she just started taking this. What did she have? It was just like this red Chevy car. I don't even know what kind it was. Might have been like a Malibu or something. Mm -hmm. And she started fishtailing it on the gravel road. This is where you learned it. Oh, my goodness. (laughs) Like, what are you doing? Dude. And she did a full 180 into the ditch. Like, she was six inches away from a telephone pole, too, the rear end. Like, she did a full 180 into the ditch because she was like, watch this, and started fishtailing the car. What was she trying to do? She just wanted to show me how she could fishtail the car on a gravel road and, and like, still went, stay in control. But she didn't stay in far. control, and it went all the way in the ditch. 
And then she, uh, we had to walk back to her house and we t told her mom. And then we went across the street to the neighbor and he got his diesel truck and drove us over. Like we were all in his truck and drove Was back to the car. Was her car ruined or she didn't hit anything? And then he pulled the car out of the ditch with the truck. And then the guy's like, hey, you probably want to get the axle looked at. And we are like, all right. And then she drove me back home with that car. And her mom wasn't mad? No, her mom was pretty cool about everything, really. Huh. I, maybe she just didn't want to look mad in front of me or something, but I never told you that. I think you did. Now I vaguely remember, but okay. that's for sure where you got it no. from. Yeah, it is. No, my dad <laughs> used to do that little like car trick with the, with the bump in the first podcast we talked about. Really? Yeah. I always thought it was cool when we would get up to that point and do that little bump because the whole car would shift and yeah it was just like wee. yeah but no she was just like watch this and started like very aggressively fishtailing the car but that was like my experience with you <laughs> so <laughs> yeah what was i like 14 <laughs> i don't know we we can end it there this podcast and just try go for more tomorrow true true so we'll just not even do outro that's it <laughs>